Now the light water reactor situation is one that uh, deserves a, a bit of talk because it figures so prominently in this whole nuclear thing. The, before I was actually sworn in as ambassador, uh, Bob Gallucci and I had lunch, uh, our first time to meet, and he talked about light water reactors and the North Korea's interest or their interest in them. And the, and it was then that I he said the big problem, of course, is paying for them because they're a huge cost. And I pointed out that uh, South Korea had gotten a, a very large settlement from Japan of war reparations from World War II back in the 60s when we were there. And it proved to be a boon to uh, President Park Chung-hee and his industrialization of the South. And it seemed to me that Japan could use that war reparation money to pay for the light water reactors that we were hoping Japan and South Korea would in fact uh, uh, underwrite. So the light water reactor promise was one that was already on the table. And of course it had to be implemented and that was another thing that would come up in the negotiation of the Geneva. The situations that uh, precipitate a war uh, are a buildup of many, many forces and uh, factors as we all know. And many of those were beginning to be in place. Uh, what it would take to ignite that is another matter. But it was my feeling, and I think uh, General Lux, that the situation was close to tinderbox uh, capacity, that it wouldn't take much to ignite it. We were that close. Now, what it, how much it would have taken, I don't know. But everybody that I knew in Seoul, Han Sung Ju, President Kim, all the people that I work with, and uh, General Luck all felt that the situation was critical, that the tension was palpable. We could cut it with a knife. I mean, things were really tense. In fact, uh, President Kim uh, was so concerned at that week that Carter was in North Korea that uh, he said that he single-handedly stopped the evacuation of the of the Americans because that would have been a sign that we were getting ready to go to war to get our people out of there. Well, President Kim didn't have anything to do with it, but the fact was that shows how alarmed he was that he thought he did. As I thought about it, those evacuation plans were were really naive. You have an enormous city that's very congested. You have presumably um, Evacuation, well, you'd get them out if there was no war, but if you think about trying to get them out when there was some sort of war, then the chaos is just just mind-boggling. But in any case, uh, uh, the, we, were, we were pretty close to, I think, a, a crisis of, of monumental proportions. And uh, I think myself that it took something like a Carter visit to uh, break break the uh, the impasse, and the reason I say that is that North Korea, as many people have pointed out, uh, is a very proud nation, and of course Kim Il Kim Il Sung was a very proud man, and it took uh, to save face to feel like he could make a concession and not just bargain. I think it took someone of of celebrity status, world name, and so forth. Whatever his position is in the United States officially, uh, to, uh, to feel like he was acknowledged and not simply uh, had, had his nose rubbed in the dirt. Uh, over and over again I've thought about the, uh, the way in which we go about foreign policy. It's, it's so often a zero-sum game. Uh, and any any given in, you know, did the other side blink? You know, that sort of thing, the Russ comment about the Cuban Missile Crisis. But those are inane comments. They're adolescent. I, I'm speaking now as a, as a former college president and as a minister. I mean, I, you know, it really troubles me to see this chauvinistic stuff uh, by grown men who have millions of lives in their hands, the responsibility. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not for craven uh, surrender, and I'm not for ignoble actions, uh, and I believe in honor and dignity. But I don't think that, that, that um, you lose your dignity by resolving something short of a, catas a catastrophe. And uh, there's no question but what a, a war on the Korean Peninsula would have been an unbelievable catastrophe. I mean, we, of course we would win. I mean, there's no question about that. North Korea had degraded military equipment and their military itself was short on rations. We saw so many of the defectors from the North and they were little people and terribly uh, uh, ill-nourished, a terrible problem. I mean, th this was just common. And no one, can, I mean, I know enough about the North and about the people there to know that it's a, it is, has been in many ways a despicable regime and it, it treats its people as, as, as Serbs, not slaves, but Serbs. And uh, it's the whole thing, you know, cries out for change. But you've got to ask at what price and who pays the price? And um, if you can avoid that and, and not give in, and on the other hand, can also avo can avoid the proliferation issue, which of course is the one that now uh, confronts us, uh, then I think we've got to look for that way.